Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PVX 101 version 15, part 29, where we're going to be talking about time groups and time conditions. But first, if you are enjoying this series, make sure you like this video and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions so you don't miss any of these videos. We put out two to three brand new tech videos every single week. Also, follow us on Twitter at Crosstalk SOL for all of the latest updates. All right, so time groups and time conditions. Essentially, what these are in FreePBX are for routing calls different directions based on the time of day or the day of the week or the day of the year. So a lot of companies have come to us and they've said, well, we just have the receptionist, you know, open up the phones in the morning and then the last person to leave shuts off the phones at night. Sort of a manual intervention of, uh, you know, opening the phone so that calls come in and then closing the phones so that the calls go to a failover destination after hours. And while you can set up free PBX to do that, we typically like to use time conditions because it removes the human element from that process, right? It's very easy for a human to forget to open up the phones or forget to turn off the phones uh, at the end of the workday. So time conditions resolve that. They automatically turn on at whatever time. They automatically go to your closed destination after a certain time. And they're also really good for routing based on holidays. So taking a look at our IVR design, we just did our main IVR in the last video. And so we've completed essentially the entire right-hand side of this uh, design. Now we have our time conditions for business hours, which say during the hours of Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., we want to send calls to our main IVR. Anything outside of those hours, however, we're going to go to this announcement that says closed and then it plays our closed greeting and dumps into the general voicemail box. Additionally, before we even get into those time conditions, we have a second time condition that checks to say, hey, is today a holiday? And if it is a holiday, we're going to go to our holiday announcement. And if it's not a holiday, then we're going to proceed on through to our time conditions, uh, business hours, normally. Okay, so basically we have two stacked time conditions. Now, before we actually create time conditions that say, based on this set of times, route calls this way or that way, we need to create that set of times. And that is called a time group. Okay, so there are two different pieces of this puzzle. Time conditions, which route calls based on the times that are defined in the time group. So we need to start with the time group. Let's go ahead and pop into free PBX. And we're gonna to go to applications all the way down here to time groups. So let's set up our business hours time group first. We're gonna say add time group. We're gonna call this business hours. And we're gonna say time to start, which is gonna be 8 a.m. So I'm gonna say eight o'clock. And then time to finish is gonna be 5 p.m which in 24 hour time is 1700 hours. So I'm gonna say 1700. Now, which days of the week are we running with these business hours? It's gonna start on Monday and it's gonna end on Friday. And that's it. Except we're also open, according to our design, on Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. So let's add another one. We're gonna say add time. Time to start, again, we're gonna say eight o'clock. Time to finish, this time it's gonna be 12 o'clock. Weekday to start this time condition, Saturday, and weekday to end this time condition, also Saturday. Okay, so now we're saying Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we're gonna submit that. Now, we need to create a second time group that's going to define our holidays. So let's add another time group. We're gonna call this holidays. And for holidays, we're just closed the whole day, right? So there's no start and end time, but we do need to start and end on specific dates, right? So let's take New Year's, January 1st. We're gonna say month day start, 
the first, month they finish, the first, and then which month? January, okay? So that is how we set up January 1st. What about July the 4th, Independence Day here in the United States? Same thing, we're gonna say the fourth day and the fourth day and July and July. Now let's add another one. Uh, we'll say uh, Thanksgiving, which let's see this year, 2022, let's look up what dates Thanksgiving is. So here in the US, Thanksgiving is Thursday, November 24th, 2022. So we typically get the, 20, the Thanksgiving Thursday and then the next Friday off. So two days in a row. So in this case, we're gonna say the 24th to the 25th, and then you might wanna adjust that if you're actually also off that Saturday, right? Uh, but we'll say November. So November 24th, November 25th. Now, submit that. All right, so now we have our holidays built into a new time group, but think about the holiday that we just created, right? Thanksgiving here in the US is one of those holidays that doesn't fall on exactly the same days every year. It's like the third Thursday in November every year, right? So the date actually changes. What I like to do is I set myself a calendar reminder to say on the 2nd of January, you know, because we're out on the 1st, so the first day back uh, for any new year, I have a reminder that says, go through and update all of your time conditions, your time groups, excuse me, for the upcoming year. There's another way to do it, however, and that is to use a calendar uh, to do the time conditions instead of manually inputting them the way that we just did. So let me show you that as well. If we go to applications and calendar, you can say add calendar, and there's four different types of calendars that we can add. CalDAV, Outlook calendar, iCal calendar, which I think is Gmail or Google uses iCal calendars, and then a local calendar. So let's just go ahead and add a local calendar. Um, we're not gonna connect out to a Gmail calendar or an Outlook calendar for the purposes of this video, but just be aware that you can do that if that is more convenient for you. So we're gonna add a new calendar called Business Hours. You can do this with just your holidays too. The example that I'm gonna do here is for Business Hours instead. We're gonna copy the description. Uh, time zone, whatever your local time zone is, is fine. Click Submit. And now we have our Business Hours calendar click the little eye icon right here, and we can take a look at the calendar, we can add an event. So we're gonna call this Monday through Friday business hours. And then we wanna start it today. Uh, we don't wanna do all day, we want it to actually be between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. So let's choose here, three, four, five, seven, eight. 8 a.m. We're gonna end at 5 o'clock p.m. And then we wanna set it recurring. So we're gonna repeat this every Monday to Friday and we're never gonna end it. So let's go ahead and, hey, and say submit. And now it has populated our business hours into this calendar. All right, so now we wanna also add our Saturday hours. So we're gonna add a new event. We're gonna say sat hours. Copy, paste, we're gonna start it today. Start time is going to be, actually we'll start it this Saturday, the 26th. Uh, start time is going to be 8 a.m. End time is going to be noon. Twelve p.m. And we're gonna say this recurs every uh, repeat every one week on Saturday. Submit. And now we have our Saturday hours in place as well. Let's go ahead and uh, I guess it just saves when you add the event. So we can go list our calendars now. If we go back in and look at it again, there we go. We can see that our events have stuck. So we've created time groups a couple different ways, right? We've done time groups for our business hours. We've done time groups for holidays. I've shown you that you can use a calendar to do your time groups as well. Uh, now we need to actually utilize those time groups. So to do that, we're gonna do time conditions. So we're gonna come applications, time conditions. And before we add a new time condition, let's look at our flowchart again. 
The first one we want to add is the business hours time condition. The reason we want to do that first is because the business hours time condition is a destination off of the holiday time condition, right? So it has to exist first before we create this holiday time condition. So we're going to say add time condition. Time condition name is going to be business hours. We don't need to worry about an override code pin. This is for if you want to manually change the hours. There is a feature code for that, which we will see. This pin code is to set a code so that when you use that feature code, you also have to know the pin code in order to change the hours. Otherwise, some random employee can guess the feature code and sort of override your time conditions and stop calls from coming into the business, uh, maybe even accidentally or also maybe on purpose, right? So uh, this pin code, if you're using that functionality, this will prevent that from happening. We're gonna use the system time zone and then we have time group mode or calendar mode, right? So we can select our business hours calendar here if we're using the calendar, or we can go to time group mode and select our business hours time group, which is what we're going to do. And then we have two settings here, the destination when the time matches and the destination when the time does not match. So if we look at our flowchart, the time group business hours matches Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday, 8 to 12. And then it doesn't match any time outside of those hours, okay? So during those hours, we want to send calls to IVR main. And then outside of those hours, we're sending it to announcement closed. So announcements, closed and submit. Now we have our business hours in place. If we go back in and edit the business hours, we can now see that there is a feature code up here, star 271. So tar star 271 is the way to manually override the time conditions if you need to. Typically you don't have to, uh, or typically you don't need to, but sometimes you might. Like if you go home, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, at noon, right? You might want to override the time conditions to shift it into closed mode for the rest of the day. And if you override the time conditions, the next time the time conditions hit, like the next Friday or the next Monday, right? Uh, it will just toggle it back into the uh, correct state at that next time. Okay, let's add another one. Add time condition. This one we're going to call holidays. We're going to choose our holiday time group. Now, in this case, if the destination matches, so is it a holiday? Yes or no? Yes, it is. Then we're going to go to announcement holiday. If it does not match, then we're going to go to our normal business hours time condition. Basically saying, is it a holiday? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Then we're going to our holiday announcement. If it's not a holiday, we are not matching a holiday go to business hours normally. Basically just flow right through into our normal business hours. So when the destination matches, we're going to announcements, holiday closure. And when the destination does not match, we're going to time conditions, business hours, submit and apply config. Okay, so if we look at holidays now, we have feature code star 272. So these feature codes, you can actually put as a button on the phone. So for instance, if you wanted your receptionist to be able to manually control the time conditions, you can make a button on the phone instead of having to remember that code. For the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna do the button on the phone, but just be aware that that is something that you can do. So let's go ahead and dial star 272. Time deactivated. And it says time deactivated, right? So it put us into, let's look at our time condition here. Temporarily matched. Okay, so right now we are matched. Let's turn it off again. Star 272. Time activated. Okay. And let's refresh again. Uh, list time groups. Oh, sorry, list time conditions. Now we are in no override. Okay, so let's test it out. Uh, we're going to set our inbound route to that holiday time condition. So connectivity, inbound routes. Edit the inbound route and set the destination to time conditions, holidays. Submit. Now, 
Right now, we're during business hours, and it's not a holiday. So when I dial the inbound number for the IVR, it should flow right into our main IVR greeting, right? Because it's going to hit our holiday time conditions. It's going to say, are you a holiday? Yes or no? The answer is no. So then go over to our second time condition. Are we during business hours? Yes or no? Yes, we are. Okay, then flow through to our main IVR. So let's toggle those around and we will sort of play with it and see how we can force it to go different directions, uh, not based on time of day, but just based on us using these feature codes. To simulate an inbound call to free PBX, it's 7777. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. Press one for sales, press two for customer service. Okay, so exactly as I said, the call came in, it hit our holiday time condition, it's not a holiday, so it hit our business hours time condition. We're during business hours, so then it went to our main IVR. Now let's go ahead and toggle the business hours time condition. So we'll say star 271 send. Time activated. Okay, let's try dialing 7777 again to simulate that inbound call. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. We are currently closed. We are currently closed. Okay, so that's what happens after hours. We are currently closed. So now let's do star 271. We're going to toggle the time condition back on. Time deactivated. And now let's toggle star 272, our holiday time condition. So star 272, send. Time deactivated. So we're forcing a holiday. We're going to say 7777 to simulate an inbound call. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. We are currently closed for the holiday. Please leave a message and we will... So closed for the holiday, star 272. Turn that off again. Time activated. And now we are back to normal. So there you have it. Time groups and time conditions. Very, very useful when designing pretty much any IVR. Like most customers that we build systems for absolutely use time conditions to divert calls one way or the other. Uh, but there are other ways that you can do it, such as call flow control, which is what we're gonna talk about in the next video. All right, make sure you guys like this video. If you got something interesting out of it, subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions, and we will see you in the next one.